It's impossible to talk about Ridley Scott's All the Money in the World, which deals with the 1973 kidnapping of the 16-year-old grandson of oil tycoon John Paul Getty, without taking into consideration the extraordinary events surrounding the last-minute replacement of the film's second leading actor. On November the 8th, Scott announced that because of the scandal surrounding the accusations of predatory behaviour directed towards Kevin Spacey, who had recently completed playing the role of Getty, Scott intended to replace the actor with 87-year-old Christopher Plummer, reportedly his original choice for the role anyway. But that the film would still open on December the 22nd, with a gala premiere four days earlier. Exactly 41 days after Scott made his surprise announcement, the film screened for the Australian press. That's quite something. But what makes this story really interesting is the fact that Plummer's hastily shot scenes are the best in the picture. Who knows what Spacey would have been like in the role, but Plummer, who bears a passing resemblance to Getty, nails the character of the miserly obsessive, described as the richest man in the history of the world, a man who would rather pay millions of dollars for a rare oil painting than ransom his grandson. Living in a vast mansion in rural England, Surrounded by servants, Getty seems almost uninterested in the fate of his eldest grandson, pointing out that if he paid the $17 million ransom originally demanded, it was likely his other grandchildren might also be kidnapped. Somehow, Ridley Scott, a consummate filmmaker, makes little of this story. A few flashbacks showing how Getty made his fortune in the first place and the disdain he seemed to have for members of his family make little impression, and none of the characters on screen is very sympathetic. Even the hapless John Paul Getty III, played by Charlie Plummer, who is no relation to Christopher Plummer, who was kidnapped in the middle of Rome in July 1973, was taken south to Calabria, where he was hidden for five months until a ransom, nothing like the original sum, was finally paid. This character is, as written in David Scarper's screenplay, based on John Pearson's book, someone with really little depth. When the ransom isn't paid, one of his ears is sliced off in a gruesome scene and mailed to a newspaper in an attempt by the kidnappers to concentrate the minds of the Getty family. But even this event lacks the impact you'd expect. One of the kidnappers, played by Romain Dury, seems kind and tries to help the boy. The rest are pretty anonymous. On the other hand, apart from Getty himself, there's Gail, Michelle Williams, the boy's concerned mother, whose ex-husband is a hopeless addict, and Fletcher Chase, Mark Wahlberg, the operative hired to try to get the boy back. As kidnap thrillers go, despite or more likely because this is a true story, it seems strangely unengaging. Yet, it's beautifully made, Darius Wolski's cinematography is, as usual, very fine, and it's all handled with brisk competence. These are commendable qualities, but we've come to expect more from Ridley Scott, and the change of lead actor can't be blamed since the scenes with Plummer have on the whole more energy and more passion than the scenes without him. All the Money in the World is a curious film, and one of the most curious things about it is the fact that, unusually for this sort of fictionalised true story, there are no end credit photos of the real characters. As a matter of fact, Getty III, who, until his death in 2011 at the age of 54, lived most of his life in England, was an ardent movie buff. He donated generously to the British Film Institute and was, as a reward, given access to rare films for his private enjoyment. As for Ridley Scott's film, I'm giving it three stars. (laughs) 